What are you doing? I'm knitting. Okay, but how do you play? You don't really... It's not really play. But what's it for? The TV's not even on. I'm knitting. I'm not playing a video game. I'm making a Kirby blanket. See? Pixels. Wait, wait. Kirby? Knitting? I knew this sounded familiar. Hang on, I want to play too. What are, what are you doing? Alright, I got all my yarn themed video games. Little Big Planet, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Yoshi's Woolly World, Unravel, and Bloodborne. Bloodborne? Because it takes place in yarn of that joke was bad, and you should feel bad. Little Big Planet! Well, not the first yarn fabric themed video game, it's definitely brought this strangely popular genre to the forefront. The concept is you play a little burlap sack doll aptly named Sack Boy in patchwork user made levels. The game is cute and clever, with the voice of Stephen Fry guiding your journey. Unfortunately, like most games based on user input, I find the worlds are either poorly made or excessively redundant, but that's just me. When it comes down to the core mechanics, I find the game's controls as fluid as stew that's been left in the fridge for two weeks. Not a thing fluid about it! The game relies on jumping and grabbing mechanics. Unfortunately, these two mechanics flow very poorly together. It's surprising how many games mix up the difference between difficulty and frustrating. Especially when your game's main draw is having players make levels for each other, you want seamless controls. See what I did there? Seamless? Shut up, James! At least they only made two of these games. Three! I'm sorry, what? They made three Little Big Planet. Kirby's Epic Yarn! The first console-based Kirby game since Kirby's Air Ride, and possibly the best yarn-themed video game. We open up with David White channeling the spirit of the late George Carlin. My name is... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that! Warped into a world of yarn, turned into wool, and recruited by Prince Fluff, it's up to Kirby to save Patchland. But Kirby wasn't always the hero to save Patchland. The Good Feel Company sought out to create a feel-good game. The original concept of a yarn-based platformer was accepted by Nintendo, and a playable prototype was ready in only three months. The game Fluff of Yarn starred none other than Prince Fluff himself, until summer 2009 when Nintendo asked, why not Kirby? Whoa! Hold on, Nintendo! Douche move! You got a little development company, working on an original concept, and you swoop in, sink your greedy little talons into it, doesn't that sound a little Star Fox adventure-y? Remember how well that worked out? Well, it turns out that that was the saving grace, because the development team had hit a wall. There was a lack of inspiration after the original design. In an interview with the late Satoru Iwata, the director of Kirby's epic yarn, Kentaro Sei, said, We'd been lost for so long, it felt like we were teetering on the edge of a cliff, and the project might get cancelled at any time. So every time I got a call from Matsumiya-san, I was like, ugh. But then we got the suggestion to use Kirby, and I thought, we just got a new extension on life. And thus, Kirby's Epic Yarn. The game is charming, calming, and relaxing. It uses actual scanned textiles for the art, which creates an incredibly beautiful aesthetic. There are no lives, no deaths, and no game over, so people of all ages can enjoy this game without frustration. So it's for kids and casuals, not real gamers. Well, besides that being a completely elitist statement, it's also wrong. There are many elements that cater to the casual audience, like collecting beads and patches to decorate your house, 
but each level has a metal system, and getting gold in every level is where the real challenge lies. Because a completionist can't have anything less than gold on every level, and gold in the latter levels is no easy feat. Something to note is that the early levels are completely new. It's a Kirby game where the first world isn't green greens, and your first boss isn't Wispy Woods. But fear not, Nostalgia Hounds, this game saves the memory lane levels for last, making them the real challenges. It's a rare treat to experience nostalgia in a completely different way than the typical rehash. But there's no copy ability, so it's not a real Kirby game. Well, yet yeah, some might lament. But for me, that brings me back. That brings me back to childhood vacations. Cramped in the back of a car, trying to fit my childlike hands around the brick of a giant Game Boy, angling it to try and catch the light just right so I can play the original Kirby's Dreamland. No copy abilities, just straightforward gameplay. Accessible, creative, and beautiful, Kirby's Epic Yarn nails down a feel-good game in one of the best Kirby titles I've ever played. Yoshi's Woolly World! Good Feel is back with a new yarn-themed game. Couldn't get enough of it, eh guys? Playing this game brings a flood of memories back of Yoshi's Island. It was a unique game that broke the mold for platform adventures, and it too had a very unique visual style, but unlike Woolly World, the story doesn't revolve around it. Unfortunately, we can't be trusted to enjoy a yarn style without justifying it, so the story is about yarn Yoshis living in a woolly world, when Kamek shows up and kidnaps almost all of the Yoshis. Now while the story revolves around yarn, the gameplay does not. Sure we have fabric themed puzzles, but they could all exist without the visual style. Gameplay is pretty much based on Yoshi's story, with the life bar, enemies that become eggs, or in this game, yarn balls, and collectible flowers and stars are like Yoshi's Island. There are also a series of yarns in every level that unlock a new colored Yoshi. Right off the cuff, there's a lot of fan service in this game. For example, the first world boss is the same boss from Yoshi's Island, with a slight variation to the fight. As nostalgic as this may be, it leads me to believe that this game is more geared to be a fan service to old fans rather than a fresh new adventure for newer or younger players, like the game's aesthetic and simple story originally led me to believe. A game that doesn't know what it is, is doomed to mediocrity. Moving on to the difficulty of the game, it swiftly accelerates in challenge to the point of reminding me how hard platform games used to be in the past. While I love the challenge, it's difficult for less experienced players, like my daughters, to enjoy, which brings back the opinion that this game suffers from an acute case of disassociative identity disorder. Unlike Kirby's Epic Yarn, this game feels confused. While a charming game in its own right, the wool theme is ham-fisted and redundant. There are no real perks for the woolly world, as no real innovation was made that wasn't possible in a regular Yoshi game. To put it simply, Yoshi's Woolly World was designed to sell. Finally, Unravel. This incredibly beautiful game was made by the Swedish developers Coldwood Interactive and published by EA. The visuals are stunning and the characters adorable. You take control of this little fella named Yarny. It's not the most creative name, but I still rank it above Unobtainium. I I guess I rank everything above Unobtainium. But... Back to Yarny. Look how wonderful this is. The little guy observes the world around him in a Wind Waker-like fashion. He really lets us know how the character is feeling. The game is quite unique. Wherever you go, you leave a trail of yarn that gets caught on things and you have only a finite amount of it. So as you progress, you slowly unravel. Hey, what do you know? That's the name of the game! If Yarny unravels completely, he cannot move further through the level and must backtrack to find a more direct route, or a bundle of yarn that adds more yarn to Yarny and acts as a checkpoint. The game has a sad, almost tragic feel to it. The story is vague, but it feels like you are exploring the memories of an old woman's childhood. 
The gameplay reminds me of Little Big Planet. If Little Big Planet got its shit together and tightened its controls to make a fluid physics-based platformer that's enjoyable to play. Unravel isn't perfect, but it is well built. Sometimes the game has an area that doesn't jive with the flow of the game, like this area where you glide on the wind and have to avoid branches. It's just so jarringly different from the way the game taught us to play. Fortunately, it's not a big part of the game and everything else seems pretty natural. All in all, the game is well crafted and visually beautiful. Its major fault for me is captivation. There wasn't a lot in this game that made me want to keep playing. This may be a personal interest or maybe it's a lack of options within the game. Every puzzle seems to only have one answer and thus the game becomes exceedingly linear. This doesn't make it a bad game, as the praise I have for this game outweighs the negative. It's definitely geared to a much more casual experience. So, in conclusion, of the best yarn-themed video games, in order of best to worst, Kirby's Epic Yarn, Unravel, and finally, Yoshi's Woolly World. You forgot about Little Big Planet.